Hello and welcome back to Fable the Lost Chapters with your three loaders in your demand. Hi Lord of Flows, it's Arbridge of Spiffening. Level 22 boxes man man, cutest twike in 2013 and all around neutral guy. Once again I will spend this episode just stacking questions. Of Morik, I shall reveal to you the legends of this world. Ah, it's been so long since I told anyone about... Demon Doors, the life of a rock endowed with consciousness is never easy, but we all have a single purpose for which we were created. Mine is to collect stories, to be a keeper of ancient secrets past and foreteller of terrible events future. That of demon doors is to safeguard the riches that lie behind them and to invent games and riddles to test those who seek them. Indeed. I shall tell you about the necropolis. The place they call the necropolis was not always a city of ghosts and relics. It was once as thriving as any town and its people as peaceful and content as any other. Yet, there was one among them who was not so satisfied with this life and bargained the fate of his city in exchange for wealth and power with entities too powerful to comprehend. The very next day, the riches he had desired were his. But he wasn't able to enjoy them for long. A vast force from beyond this world swept the city and wrought utter devastation so swiftly that the dead didn't realize they were no longer among the living. Some still wander the streets, shadows of their former selves, forever condemned by the avarice of one man. That's anything. Perhaps you would like to hear the story of the ship of the drowned. When the old kingdom constructed the Hook Coast Lighthouse, they did so to house a magical item known as the Fire Heart. The beating of its powerful pulse summoned a ship from the depths of time, sunken for millennia with a crew of whispers. This ship could carry the traveler to any part of the world, no matter how remote or inaccessible. But it would take a steely soul to withstand the desperate solitude of the journey. Can't you actually go, you know, with, a, with multiple people? I don't know. Hmm. Let's see. Let's discuss the Singing Sword. One of Albion's oldest fables is the tale of a sword whose enormous powers were matched only by the perfect pitch voice with which it would sing battle songs. But in some versions of the myth, it was its dreadful lack of tune that would defeat whole armies. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? This has led some scholars to believe that the tale has its root in Temins, the worst bard ever to exist. He, who once killed an old hero by regaling him with a monstrously bad melody. Unfortunately, it is only a fable, and such a sword has never existed. Oh. Ah, it's been so long since I told anyone about the gods, Scorn and Avo. Were they actually created by merchants or is that misinformation then? Though many worship these so-called ah. gods, the temples to Scorn and Avo can only be dated as far back as 400 years ago, when they were founded by a ruthless trader. He uncovered two locations in Albion where the will was particularly strong. 
In one of them, it tended towards good, healing those who stood there. In the other, it tended towards evil, filling the mind of its visitors with horror and violent urges. The trader saw an opportunity. He would create two temples to two opposing gods and demand gold from those who felt their power. In time, people came to believe in the existence of Scorn and Arvo, but they are nothing but false idols. Yeah, I have talked till morning. All right, and now on to see the sign of Kalran. You seek the law of beasts and fiends. Why don't I share with you my knowledge of Balverines? The first Balverine was born of the bite of a creature far more terrible, the Balvorn, who dwelt upon this world when gods and demons were still the primary force. When men first started to walk amongst them, the Balvorn would feast on the flesh of thousands at a time. Only once did a human survive such an attack. He became the first Balverine, and his curse has survived to this day. Oh well. I know some interesting things about Krakens. If Krakens had existed on land as the first trolls did, or in the air as the greatest dragons did, they would be as rare as most other creatures from the age before man. But they dwell in the deep, unexplored mysteries of the sea. And there, they have survived since their creation in the War of the Gods. There is much in the vast depths of the ocean that is unknown to the people of Albion. And its people should pray it stays that way. Ooh. I shall tell you about... The Sand Goose. The Sand Goose. The hell is that? Many strange creatures have walked upon this world since its birth. Yet, the historians who found some of their remains are responsible for one which never existed. The fabled Sand Goose. Ah. Joining the remains of various beasts, they hypothesized that this flightless bird was the size of a house lived primarily in deserts, and was able to speak a variety of languages. Uh, how do you even... How, how do you examine remains to find what languages it was able to speak? There are those who still believe in its existence, but their search has proved fruitless so far. Well, 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 that's hmm. surprising. Let's see. Let's discuss... Your face. Screamers. Basically the same thing. These unfortunate beings were once men. Will users who dared to oppose Jack of Blades. They were cursed never to find rest except by torturing the souls of the dead and feeding on the life force of the living. But their true nature is only hinted at in our reality. Their true power is in the realm of death, where souls must pass before reaching their place of torment or peace. Every person who dies in this world must escape their screams before finding their own rest. Ah. It's been so long since I told anyone about summoners. Unseen for almost as long as the old kingdom has been gone, these creatures were once the scourge of Albion. A will user called Halic, cast out by the Archon for his use of dangerous dark magics, created these colossal beings 
by reanimating the dead bodies of fallen warriors. People throughout the kingdom learn to fear Halleck. And though it was the magician himself who was the summoner, his creations soon earned that title through their ability to appear out of nothing as they brought forth total devastation. Nice. All right, uh, and now to the A one. Ah, yes. The sign of a Visto. The history of the land is yours to hear. Why don't I share with you my knowledge of the Archon? Yes, do that, yes. This age understands nothing of the old kingdom. Archon is a name that has passed down many generations. A lineage of powerful kings united by a unique bloodline. And by possession of the Sword of Aeons, when Jack found it, it was a ghost of the weapon it once was. And the name of Archon has become so detached from the realities of those kings that it is meaningless among the modern men. But the first Archon still casts his shadow in this world. A world that would not even exist had he not wrested it from the gods it belonged to. Before the age of man. I know some interesting things about Hook Coast. In the early years of the kingdom, a group of monks retired from the thriving cities that were appearing everywhere and settled in the harshest place they could find, founding an abbey on a distant shore. Soon, the whole community grew to serve their needs, and in time, the kingdom built a lighthouse that would guide ships from its ports to the unexplored lands in the northern wastes. When the old kingdom fell, it was in a wave of devastation that affected every town and city in its borders. But a handful of the monks, who still inhabited the abbey, knelt along the coast and used their willpower to protect this port and its people. You can still see the swirls of magic that mark the place they fell. Hook Coast was cut off from the rest of the world, but thanks to them, it stood intact. And then... Ah, it's been so long since I told anyone about Jack. Of blades. Ooh. The mask you carry is empty, but Jack has used it for longer than you can comprehend. He is no hero. He is not even a man. When the world was a blur of fire and demons, when its soil had felt not the tread of humans and was filled with creatures only your worst nightmares could begin to suggest, even then was Jack old. What you killed in the Chamber of Fate was just the latest vessel he had inhabited. Take good care of the Soul Mask now. Without it, you have no hope of stopping his new incarnation. And that's fun. I shall tell you about... Nostro. Among the oldest heroes still bound to this world is Nostro, the founder of the guild. He was a tireless warrior who felt at ease only with a moving blade in his hand and the blood of enemies raining down upon his armor. But he did not die the death he craved, for he was poisoned by an assassin, leaving his soul languishing unfulfilled in this earthly realm. You returned the battle attire that was stolen from his grave. But he still seeks an honorable end before he can be truly at peace. That I will have to provide him, I think. I like the Guildmaster too, too much to kill him instead. Why don't I share with you my knowledge of the Oracle? Yes, tell me more about yourself. I was created by order of the third Archon, not just to prepare the kingdom for future disasters, 
but to act as a keeper of all past and present knowledge. Four will users with visionary powers were charged with the task. Kalran, Avisto, Yeron, and Morik. Each carved a glyph of inquiry into stone with the symbols that would allow their user to question me. After the fall of the kingdom, thousands of years later, Snowspire found itself under imminent attack from invading forces. The guild sent four acolytes to bury the glyphs in the necropolis, where they remained until you found them. Have you spent the whole day here then? Oh well. It's been so long since I told anyone about the Prophets of the Fireheart. When the old kingdom was on the verge of collapse, I wasn't the only thing to be silenced and protected. The Fireheart used to call forth the Ship of the Drowned and to project the Archon's powers across vast distances was sealed behind the primal demon door. The first ever created, charged with guarding it, were the five prophets who had predicted the kingdom's imminent destruction. They were encased in glass cages that both protected them from the beating of the heart and kept them alive until such time as they were released from their duty or died fulfilling it. Oh well. Perhaps. You would like to hear the story of Snowspire. Yes, please. The town of Snowspire was once but one of many thriving cities in the northern wastes, and its lost bay served as the furthest port in all of the Old Kingdom. Its warriors, steeled by the harshest winters known to man, were among the fiercest the Archon had at his disposal, and it was to them that he entrusted the protection of the Oracle. But when the kingdom fell, Snowspire and all that surrounded it was beset by invading hordes. The Kallis gates were silenced, and the people of the north were cut off from all living beings beyond the icy seas of its coast. And that's all of that then. All right, uh, I was meant to go to not hold Glade. Now, I won't tell you again. We don't need a hero. For the first time in years, we aren't being attacked, sieged, or kidnapped by anything. Now leave us alone. You? <laughs> Briar Rose said you would come. I will tell you what I know, if it will get you out of my sight. We were both once called Kings of the Arena, but there have been many heroes in the past who have claimed that name. You should search in the bloody dust of the arena itself. They say the souls of past champions haunt it, resting in the place of their greatest achievement. Now go, unless you're here to take my soul. I'm sure your lady would enjoy that. <laughs> yes, you probably would. Why go all the way to the arena? You have a perfectly good soul right in front of you. Because I do not want to kill Thunder. Thunder's cool. Thunder wrestled Krakens, basically. You know, that's kind of cool. This doesn't look promising. Dead creatures killed everywhere. Oh. That doesn't sound very good. Run! Run for your life! These things appeared in the cells and started killing everyone. Click the cops? No. Afraid to fight another hero, were you? Very well. I have prepared some entertainment for you inside. The 
This reminds me. I've actually not set up my skills. That was quick. quick. Assuming I am actually running uh, with the strike right now as well. Do I have to do it like this? Oh yeah, that seems to be an activatable skill. Should be fun, though. Loads of corpses and nothing to guard these things. Take them all. Even the crunchy chick. Alrighty, to the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a truly special occasion. Watch a hero ripped to pieces by trolls and Jack's very own minions. Collect an arena soul, sure. I'm not sure if I'm running to multi strike thing or not. Because I'm not sure how that works. Well. There it is. West car waiting for you at the bottom of a slime. But what's this? More trolls? And our washed up ex champion take this punishment much longer. I do not think I have any trouble taking this so-called punishment. Thanks for your concern, Jack. Come on, fall over. There we go. Minions are back, and they brought some puppies for our hero to play with. Yay, puppies! I like puppies. Bring it on. Still not sure how Monty Strike works. May have been a waste of my abilities. I could probably take all of them on. No, when I see all of them, I mean the whole bloody species. Bring them on. Come on, Jack. You can take care of the logistics of that, can't you? Let's remove that curse from this world. You and I, it's time for you to redeem yourself by curing... That curse. The pain of the existence of many. Well, that's dead. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from sunny snow spa, I give you summoners. Sunny indeed, eh? These guys really pack a punch, don't they? Ah, okay, so I think I now realize maybe how the strike works. Probably not. Where is the slime pit? I need this important quest card. Bring it on! Got them to keep running instead of trying to motor strike. Oh, 
Oh, so that's... yeah. Alright. Now that is a proper motor strike for a change. Ah, get back here. Look at that combat multiplier! 69! Okay, 70. Never mind. It's no longer as impressive as it was. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Got myself a soul! Sir, you found your first soul, did you? But the shrine is ever so greedy. It will want more before it's had its fill. I wonder who the next one will belong to. <laughs> That's actually a good question. It's either Nostro or someone whom I cannot recall. Do you have that arena soul? Come back to the shrine and we'll see if it works. Yeah, I'll be right there in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see if I have any potions I could drown myself in. I will never be able to use all this civil experience, but... I mean, might experience, but hey, we've done it. We've done it. Drunk some potions there. Anyway, thanks for for watching. I'll see you next time.